Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at Lens for Kubernetes. It's a kind of a UI, or it is, it is a UI for Kubernetes, so instead of you getting tired in your fingers, writing uh, kubectl a lot of times, and then uh, doing, doing all your commands right there, then you can actually download this cool uh, UI called Lens. Let us just get started and right into it. You can see this is the web page that they have. Right here, there is both a, a, a free, uh, they both have a, a, a free version, and then it's also, and then it costs a bit, uh, depending on, um, depending on if if it's used for for business users. Uh, here, here we see here that here's the change, here's the differences. Here we have a personal one that's free. Individual developers, education, people getting started with Kubernetes, blah, 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 zero. So the, and that is the one that, uh, that I'm using right now. I'm getting to learn this Lens uh, product right here. Then later on, it costs like $9 per month and per, per user per month. And then we uh, can collaborate. I, I actually, actually, I don't, I, have, I haven't dug into this part right here. So I don't know what extra we actually get um with the add-on services uh, but i am very happy with the default services and that uh, that is what i'm going to show you uh, tonight in this video right here uh, i have already logged in i i used uh, google to sign up and you could do the same um it was very easy then you point to um then you need to be logged into kubernetes also and you need to point to your um yeah to your your, your cube configuration folder and then actually then you can choose um, then you can actually, then you can choose your cluster uh, by default, and you can of course you can have multiple clusters. There are room in the left side for for multiple uh, clusters. So if you have multiple clusters to play around with, then uh, you, you can have one. Uh, or, uh, yeah, you can have all of these in each uh, box in the, in the left side right here. I only have one uh, which I use for my Minecraft and for my uh, Terraria servers. Um, so let us just let us see the the first page right here. I really like what I really like about this is actually the and this is the the part that I like the most. That is actually the overview for uh, re regarding uh, how much resources, uh, how, how many resources that my uh, all of my uh, all of my namespaces and all of my pods actually use. Because I, I have a very I, I have no feeling uh, whatsoever when I just spin up stuff that, to see how much stuff, uh, how much resource, how many resources are, uh, for instance, my Minecraft server taking, and how much is my Tire server taking, how much memory are they taking, how, how much CPU power are they taking um, and as i can see right here i'm actually using a lot of memory like uh, 5.4 gigabyte um, so that's a kind of a lot but i have a capacity of 6.5 gigabyte oh sorry a capacity of almost 8 gigabyte and then um, allocated capacity of 6.5 gigabyte so i'm still happy happy um, so that's that's okay and my CPU is uh, is definitely not used there's, uh, there's plenty of CPU uh, left i have a capacity of two and the users right now is, is 0 0.27 and if this is of course it's just some numbers for for how much cpu uh, uh, is being used right here and you can also see some percentages users 14 percent requests uh, 48 percent and uh, limits 21 percent the request and the limits that is uh, when you start up when you create a deployment in kubernetes then you can actually uh, you should actually add a resources uh, a resources YAML area where you actually set how much uh, how much CPU do you request and how much memory do you request and what is the limit for this deployment also and this is uh, exactly so so you actually you have a feeling for how much each application uh, can use and then um, then you can scale your clusters and add nodes for um, that yeah to to, to support your, your applications so um, yeah do not or uh, of course do you should not you should not uh, under uh, you should not uh, under uh, Underestimate uh, how much your application is, is using, but you should not also not overestimating because then it's 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 kind of uh, taking up the it's not it's not taking the resources, but uh, the your administrator could actually think that you at at some point that you can actually need this uh, you do need these high resources. Uh, let us look at the nodes right here. So I have one pool at DigitalOcean, uh, and that, that is a pool name right there. It has some memory, it has some disk space, it has some CPU, it has an age. Of, it, it gives me a lot of uh, information right here. And, 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 that is actually, yeah, there's a lot right here. There's a number of CPUs, some memory. Um, 
I have some pods running right now, Minecraft, and so I, and this is um, yeah, and, and this is on different namespaces as we can see right here in the bottom. The, the, I have a namespace named Minecraft and one na named named um, Terraria, and I can see my Terraria so it almost not does not take up any memory, and uh, the Minecraft actually uses a lot of memory. It uses like two gigabytes. Or is it? Is it two? It's, two, uh, it's only two megabytes now. Okay, that's not much, I think. Was two thousand, isn't it? No, it's not. It's not. It's, they're not using a lot anyway right now. I think it was. Uh, you can see right there. It's actually in meg in megabytes. So, um, let us just check. Yeah, that does matter. I want to. I want to show a lot of other things. Uh, I'll dig into that afterwards. Uh, but we have some workloads right here, and that's that's exactly what I think is cool. And that here I can see my pods, and I can change my my namespace up here. Then I can say, say that I want to check out Terraria instead of checking out uh, Minecraft. And then I can see I have my pod right here. It has been running for so so long. It's the internal IP address. It's running on this node right here. So if you're using multiple nodes, then you can also see which node is running on. This just gives me a cool overview that I would uh, it would take. Me a lot of typing if I if I should get this with the with the with the kubectl kube uh, kube uh, commands the client for the terminal client for for for, for Kubernetes right that, that will take a lot of uh, a lot of commands a lot of lines then we have some deployments right here I have a Terraria deployment right here and if I go to Minecraft then I have a Minecraft uh, let me just check right here. Yeah, there's a Minecraft. Uh, that, that is a micro Minecraft deployment right there. Of course, I can also dig into that and see what's actually going on. I can actually see I have two replica sets, and that is uh, a bit messy. That's because I've installed a new version, and then the old replica set was not deleted by default. This was this one right here. I have one that's two days old. That's because the new version one point nineteen came out, and then I was then I just uh, updated um, actually just by restarting my uh, my deployment. You can just uh, create a, you can just write the kubectl rollout uh, restart, or you can add some new metadata to a deployment and then apply that uh, to your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, then then um, then your deployment will restart. Uh, and this means if you have a pool, um, if you have a pool uh, strategy that says always, then that means that the, it will automatically pull the, the, a new, uh, a new version of the um, Minecraft uh, Docker image, and then uh, and then start it up, and then you actually have upgraded your um, your Minecraft uh, pod like that or your deployment like that. So let us delete this one right here. Yes, remove that. That's another thing I think is really, really cool. Again, I save a lot of typing right here. I can just sit here and click instead of typing um, some long lines. Now I just delete a replica set that's not used anymore. Then we have there are no jobs, there are no cron jobs to find. Um, replica set that I have some leftovers for Terraria. I don't think so. No, oh, I have a lot actually. Okay, let us also clean those ones up. I'll delete this, remove. Remove, delete this one. Remove. You can also scale up and down. Actually, that's another cool thing. Delete. And I could also check. You could also check off multiple, uh, multiple replica sets. And I'm not paid from for yeah by lens or anyone to, to yeah to to to, to showcase this uh, product right here. It's just because it's I think it's cool and it's uh, it's very nice, especially that since it's it's free in the in the first tier at least. So. Um, then, then we have some configurations right here. We have some config maps, and again, I can go in and I can um, I can edit them, and I can also um, I can also delete them. Can we also create a new one if I wanted to do that? I'm not sure. I don't think I can. I create a new one. Yes, I probably can. There. Now oh, that's new cluster. Actually, I've never tried to create a new resource. Maybe it's here, new tab. Ah, okay. Then I have my terminal right here. See that's quite cu uh, cute, right? Then I can actually um, then I can get my terminal and, and then run stuff down here. Uh, also, so that's yeah another plus in my book for for lens. I think it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's very cool to get an overview of, of how how is your cluster actually doing, and uh, should you should you scale your should you get more some more nodes in your cluster? Should you scale up your the existing nodes that you already have? It's actually quite cool. Um, so I also have so here's my ingress rule. Post fix didn't I add that? No, not post fix. Sorry, it was at 
WordPress, I think. Yes. Here you can see that here I'm actually forwarding the domain code investigator to a WordPress page. I think I'll remove this at some point uh, because I want to create a yeah an, a, a real a real, real uh, web application and have that as my web page at some point when I have time. Um, so let's see when that will happen. That you can also look for Helm scripts. There's a lot of Helm charts right here. Of course, you can also do that at. Uh, I, I would actually not look for Helm charts here. I would I would do that on on Helm's official web page instead. Um, but let us say that we want to to play around with Apache. Uh, they have an Apache server right here. Then we can install that, and then we can get that. Here we have the. This is the Helm Helm chart. If you don't know what Helm is, it's a templating language uh, where you can template a lot of things. But it's uh, it's very useful for Kubernetes, especially because. So if you if you're dealing with Kubernetes with different environments, then I would definitely recommend that you look at Helm three, which. Uh, can actually help you templating template your um, your YAML files so you can just create your YAML file files once and then you can uh, put in different variables depending on which environment you're dealing with. So in your dev, then you can put in your dev password for your database, for instance, as a secret, uh, and for production you can play put in your production passwords, etc. Um, you can do all that, all that with Helm. You can also make them uh, react differently. You can also make the scale them differently. Maybe in production you want more pods than you uh, that you want in develop in your development environment, etc., etc., etc. So it's quite cool. It's quite cool. Helm Helm three. If you haven't heard about that, definitely uh, dig into it. That's actually just what I wanted to show you. What was the URL you asked once again? It was lens k8 k8 uh, s l e n s and then dev like this let's just print the front page right here if you have experiences with it then uh, just let me know um, i have installed it for windows right here but you can also install it for for linux i actually tried to install it on an ubuntu at some point it gave me uh, it gave me some problems actually but um I, I didn't try that hard actually, so I, I, I don't remember. It's, it's like half a year ago. So, um, but for Windows, it works like a charm, as you can see at least. So, thank you very much for watching. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.